Hello, I'm Ryan McEachran and welcome to The Dig. On this episode, I'm speaking with David Van Claveren from H2Tech about their technology that drastically reduces carbon emissions on diesel engines. But first, we have our own Stephanie Alvarez to share some important information with us. Hi, Steph. Glad to have you back. Hi, Ryan. I'm happy to be back. MSCA Canada, in partnership with the Trade Commission Service Tokyo, is developing our first virtual Japanese trade mission in November of this year. We will have a great list of Japanese mining houses, and we will do what we do best, connect our members to business opportunities globally. For more information, and if you wish to present to these mining houses, you can contact me directly at alvarez at mscacanada.ca. Back to you, Ryan. Thanks, Stephanie. We'll catch up with you later in the show. When we talk about reducing carbon footprint, the first thing that comes to mind is reducing diesel emissions. But what if we could reduce emissions and increase fuel efficiency at the same time? Sounds like a win-win situation. And that is exactly what H2 Tech offers its clients. So let's dig in now with David Van Claveren from H2 Tech. Hi, David. Welcome to The Dig. Thank you, Brian. Glad to be here. Excellent. So before we get in and talk about some of the trends that you're seeing out there, um, maybe if we can hear from you, what, what is H2 Tech and what do they offer? Uh, okay, sure. Um, H2 Tech sells Dynasert's hydrogen system um, to natural resource applications and industry, so mining, obviously. It's essentially bolt-on technology for diesel engines. So if you're looking at a haul truck excavator, power generator, we bolt it on, and essentially it does really has two benefits. One, um, it improves the fuel economy northwards of 10%. And um, it reduces the tailpipe carbon emissions. Um, and depending on which emission, let's say for now, half. So pretty important benefits. That's what we do. Excellent. So in terms, you've been selling it directly to the mine industry for a couple of years now. Right. Um, how, how have they responded? We're, we're, we're aware that there's this kind of first to be second attitude a lot of times in, in mining and, and an apprehension of new technology. So how have they responded? Okay, so that's a really good way to put it. Um, first, I will say they respond very well to the story. I mean, let's face it, a mine has uh, on the revenue side, uh, not a lot of control. You know, cost of gold, silver, nickel, you know, it's fixed. So where they really have to focus for profitability is on costs. And so our story says right away, we can significantly improve that. I mean, if you take, for instance, one of the more common haul trucks, the Cat 793, it can burn upwards of a million dollars worth of fuel a year. Wow. And if we save 10% or better, that's $100,000 to the bottom line. And in our technologies, ROIs are most often under a year. So that part of the story resonates really, really well. Um, and of course, you know, with, Mines and an industry being concerned with CSR today, um, the whole idea, uh, it's topical, of course, to um, invest in or, or investigate opportunities to reduce your greenhouse gases. So the story resonates really, really well. But you sort of, you sort of said it, you know, everybody wants to be what, first to be second. Or, mm -hmm. So um, innovation, by definition, is new. Mm -hmm. And new equals risk. So, you know, when we're looking at anything innovative, um, you know, the story, of course, has to resonate with whatever technology you have. It has to have the benefits, you know, and the, reward for the, and the rewards for the cost. But you really do need to deal with risk. So there's a, there's a whole number of steps that have to take place where, you know, this is considered in these operations and it takes time. So nothing's quick in the business, but the story resonates really, really well. And that's interesting that you that you're saying that I, I, it makes sense to me when I first heard about your technology and to the point of what people are looking to do in the industry, one of them reduce their carbon in, uh, footprint. Uh, it just made sense. So globally, where, where are you seeing the uptake on this technology? Uh, if you can expand okay, on that. So um, interestingly enough, we spent uh, a, a lot of effort in the first couple of years in South America. Um, and uh, I think there is a sensitivity in, in, in those countries uh, about 
carbon emissions and, and the environment and so forth. And we know they've also had some problems in the country, big high profile problems. So, um, um, so a, lot of, a lot of work has gone there, but I think it's kind of interesting um, that a really unlikely first market was Russia. Uh, really? Yeah, so I know, same here. <laughs> um, but a very large diamond mining operation there. Um, uh, that has, I don't know if you know much about, of course you know something about diamond mining, but they have very, very deep open pits. And so for a number of reasons, not just the environment, but also because for, you know, health and safety reasons, a lot of these gases can sink and, and there's, uh, there are risks with this and our technology can mitigate that. So uh, one of the, the innovation director actually reached out to us and we said, look, we're not in Russia yet. Uh, we're focused in South America, North America. And they said, we can overcome that. We're highly interested. So after a year, we have uh, a couple trials going on, one with a, a, a very large diesel generating company they own and the other with a very big uh, mine in um, north of the Arctic Circle. So, um, so that's kind of an interesting first you know, market and not to take anything away from the other markets, which we're, we're progressing very well in as well. Okay, that's and that's it. I would have never picked. I would have lost that bet if I said Russia was the first one that would uh, pick up on this. Uh, what I would call greener, greener, clean tech, tech technology. Um, if we can talk about a little bit about that, so you're starting to see the other regions starting to kind of pick up as well. They're starting to see the the benefits of this. Yeah, and it's interesting. You know, let's go back to South America for a moment. So. Um, companies like Yamana, Codelco, they have these really, really good innovation departments, good leadership in innovation. Um, and we've touched on this whole, you know, first to be second thing, and innovation has to wrestle with that all the time. So, um, but these, you know, they're, they're looking for these benefits. They understand that there are risks. Innovation, again, equals new, equals risk. Um, so, you know, we're finding that, that this emphasis now on uh, using innovation to improve operations, drive profitability, reduce cost, things of that nature, uh, is a great um, aspect for us to, to lever in, in a number of countries, including, of course, South America. So I think that has been um, a, a clear advantage for us to, to focus on those folks. And they, of course, realize, like I had said before, you know, risk needs to be managed. So now you got to deal with the operations groups. You have to deal with... Um, the health and safety groups, the maintenance groups, and so forth and so on. Um, but we're finding that the drive for innovation to lower costs, uh, also meet some of these uh, so CSR uh, mandates, initiatives, priorities, uh, is really helping us get the kind of traction in South America. So that's really working for us. Right. So how, how are you handling that, that risk management, if you will, in your value proposition? Right. So um, again, it's kind of like, you know, circling the wagons by way of an analogy. So the wagon is the risk. And, and you want to you remember and you want to resolve that. Everybody wants the benefits. Look, they all want to set, save millions of dollars in, in costs and we all want to be responsible. Um, you know, and, and by the way, it's not just being responsible, but I just may tack on something here. Uh, there is a financial uh, uh, aspect to carbon um, in various countries, carbon tax, you know, other sort of carbon... Uh, initiatives where companies need to respond or pay a price. And so um, I think that that also is an important aspect of this to, to consider. So when you look at it, then you bring, you, you identify the risk. Um, and then for our, our purpose, we, for instance, say, we do a whole proof of concept um, approach that says, we're going to carefully um, prove to you on a set of, say, two or three engines or whatever the case may be, that the technology works in your application. Because you're gonna remember, it's new, right? So yes, we have third-party validation and we have all that kind of stuff, but when you're new, you wanna see it for yourself. So we actually have designed a comprehensive proof of concept approach, and then we bring in people that are experts in various, again, circling the wagon, experts in various respects to the management of the trial, the measurement of the results, um, to give everybody the confidence that the technology does deliver what we say it does deliver. It does not propose risk to the engines or the safety or the personnel. And we, we, we bring all that together. And we work with organizations like 
MSTA, which we're are a big fan of the MSTA group, where they bring us in, there's a credibility aspect to it. EDC often comes on board as well. EDC will offer, uh, you know, uh, guarantees and other things with our technology that, that mitigates risk. The trade commissioner services get, get involved. Um, they provide all kinds of tacit sort of knowledge about market entry and, and circumstance. So when you're dealing with a, co with a company in Chile or, or Peru or wherever, when you have a team, like, you know, like the MSTAs and the EDCs and the, and the TCS and then uh, sometimes third party uh, validation uh, on measurement, they, they look at it and they say, okay, this makes sense to us. We're managing the risks. We're going to trust the outcomes. And... It, and if it's what we think it is, we have a pathway to something that's really important for our business. So that's kind of how we manage it. Um, and recognizing that there are numerous stakeholders. You know, it's not just the innovation guy. They're great. I'm super fan of them because they understand the, you know, the need to bring you in. But maintenance has to be on board. Operations have to be on board. As I've said before, health and safety. We're talking about hydrogen, right? So in our case, yeah. you know, people worry, explosiveness mm -hmm. and so forth. So our, that's our strategy. We, we look at it as the wagon is risk. Let's, let's circle it with, in, with you know, the right partners, the right people, the right approach, so that at the end of this, we deliver on what is a safe and appropriate pr approach and technology for these mines. Excellent. Well, it, it, it sounds like you're bringing definitely the comfort and you've got the right approach for uptake. So, um, and you brought up, it seems to be a focus on scale, I would say, as your kind of your first target. So, you know, the big open pit mines, I never even considered the gen sets, uh, you know, diesel generators uh, as well. That basically a diesel engine is what your, what your target um, is for. Um, how about applications underground? Is it something you've explored yet or? Sure. Um, in Chile, there's lots of underground mines and we are doing a pilot with, um, uh, an underground miner there. They have open pits and underground. Right. So in underground, there's another set of circumstances that are also interesting because admittedly, you know, you're dealing with a smaller vehicle. Often it's like a Volvo articulated truck with a 14 liter engine uh, versus a uh, CAT 797 with a 106 liter engine. So the consumption levels are different, obviously, um, but you are underground. So when you're underground and you're out of your tailpipe, you're pushing out NOx and other, you know, emissions that are harmful to people. Um, it become, that becomes a particularly interesting aspect. And for mines in underground, they have to spend a lot of energy to provide the right ventilation to you know, achieve a healthy environment down there. So um, the underground mine is also a great environment uh, for our technologies and from our approach. Like you talked about scale. Many of the companies we deal with are large multinational uh, organizations that have assets that are in open pits, underground, and so forth. So, um, you know, if there's a diesel engine and it's emitting, uh, you're spending money to, to, to operate it and it's emitting uh, emissions that are, uh, you know, harmful to the environment and, and your, your personnel, we're in the game. Excellent, excellent. So with, re with regards to that, are there any other pearls of wisdom that you can uh, kind of share with the audience? Yeah, so I think at the end of the day, um, and we've sort of touched on it, but everybody gets excited about their own technology, especially if it's innovative, right? Like we're saving the world or we're doing something. And it's very easy to get caught into, uh, you know, your needs, your technology, your beliefs. But I think it's really important all the time to put yourself in your mind, the mind or your clients or your customer shoes. What are their concerns? What are their risks? What are their needs? And make sure that you approach, this is my, my approach anyway, is your approach is to satisfy that. So if that's a pearl of, pearl of wisdom, I offer it up. Always remember 99% of the conversation should be about your customer's needs and wants and desires. Well, and, and, and perseverance seems to be a key one too. You've, uh, like you said, you've, it's a couple of years into it, but it's, it's starting to reap the rewards of your efforts. And um, I, think, I think your technology and solution is very timely. Uh, for for our industry, and uh, I expect to see a, a larger uptick in adoption for for you. Yeah, so, thank you. thank you very much, Dave. I really appreciate you being on the show. Ryan, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Take care. And thank you for joining us on the dig. 
But before we leave, let's bring back Stephanie to tell us more information. Hi, Steph. Hi, Ryan. Our Companion 2021 is a very special edition as it marks MSDA Canada's 40th anniversary. Our Compendium is for all new and existing members. And for more information, you can contact Linda Collins at collins at msdacanada.ca. And also for those who are not yet members of MSDA Canada and would like to be part of this very special edition, as well as have all the benefits about our membership, you can contact us at membership at msdacanada.ca. Have a great rest of the week. Thanks, Stephanie. And I might add, it's also the 25th edition of the Compendium. So it's quite the milestone year for us. So until next time, I'm Ryan McEachran. Take care and stay safe.